Okay, so today it's time to do Wednesday, uh, the 13th of June 2012, and we've got the big boy equilibrium energetics and elements to go through today. So let's kick off. Um, question one we start off with a nice born harbor cycle, and it's a, a lovely question. It's lithium fluoride, can't get a lot easier than that. Uh, define the term lattice entropy. Well, obviously, you know your definitions by now, um, you've done enough of these papers. Uh, to know its formation, one mole of an ionic compound form is gaseous ions. So that's an easy to mark. Okay, so we now need to um, fill out the, uh, well, complete the born harbor cycle for this lithium fluoride. So bottom line is lithium fluoride in a solid state. Um, obviously, this is going to be the formation. So I'm going to start off, oh, not lithium, um, lithium solid plus a half F to gas. Going up, well let's first atomize lithium to get lithium into a gas. I'm leaving fluorine alone. Now, uh, tell you what, let's atomize fluorine. So lithium gas and now I've got fluorine gas as well. The next stage is I am going to do the first ionization of lithium. So I get lithium plus gas plus an electron. It's still got my fluorine atoms knocking on. This next step, um, which they completed for me, is going to be the electron affinity of fluorine, where that electron pops on to him there. Okay, you now once we actually do the calculation, well, it's only calculated the lattice entropy, so it's not too bad. Remember, it's the formation, which is minus 616, minus everything else, which is minus 328, plus 520, plus 79, um, plus 159, if I can read my glasses correctly. If you do all of that, you should get 1,046 kilojoules per mole. Um, I kind of probably work out your brackets first, unless you're really confident about working those out. Um, this change produces is spontaneous, but has a negative entropy. Why does this change take place spontaneously? Well, it must take place spontaneously because delta H, obviously we know that delta G has to be negative for that, so we know that delta H must be more negative um, than T delta S to make sure that that takes place. Right, it's now asking me to compare some lattice entropies, sodium fluoride, sodium fluoride, magnesium fluoride. Okay, so let's have a think about the ions that are involved. Um, that four is going to have magnesium 2 plus F minus in, Na plus Cl minus, Na plus F minus there. So, first of all, different factors affect lattice entropy, where it's going to be ion size and ion charge. First of all, Mg2 plus is the smallest um, ion um, and has the highest charge, therefore is going to have the largest charge density, far more so than Na+, uh, which is a large ion and it's got a plus charge. Um, in terms of fluoride employed, we know that F- is the smallest ion. Um, compared to Cl minus, and therefore F minus has again the largest charge density, and so the strongest attraction will be between. Mg2 plus and F minus ions. And that means that's why you've got the most exothermic lattice entropy there. Um, should also uh, mention that, um, so that's the most, and then um, followed by the attraction between. 
Na plus and F minus. And you can see that from the last entropy, that is the second most exothermic lattice entropy um, because it has the um, uh, strongest attraction. Right, so we're kicking off with some equilibrium now. We moved on to question two. Kc for this expression, well, should be quite straightforward. Don't forget your square brackets. Uh, that is going to be squared n2 over co squared no squared. Um, probably should be the same thing as well, just to keep them happy. Uh, what are the units going to be? Okay, well, let's have a look. This is going to be moles, decimeters, to uh, minus three, and that's going to be cubed overall. Moles, decimeters, to the four. So that's going to cancel with that. So you'll end up with it being moles to the minus one, decimeters, to the power of three. Okay, now it's time to work out KC. And I've done this little bit that they told me that's the equation. These are the moles that they told me. I need to work out my equilibrium moles, which I'm doing here. So, I know from going there to there, I've lost 0.20 moles. So I must also have lost 0.20 moles there because it's a one-to-one. -one. So I end up with 0.26 moles of that. Um, ozone for carbon dioxide, again, it's one-to-one, -one, or two-to-two. -two. Um, if I've got 0 0.2, I'm going to gain, I'll end up with 0 0.2 moles there. The one to watch out for, of course, is for every two of those, you only need one of those. So I would have only got 0 0.1 moles of that. You then bump that into Kc. Um, let's just write out Kc. Again. There we go. Um, pop those numbers in, so it's going to be 0 0.20 squared times 0 0.1 over 0 0.26 squared times 0 0.25 squared. Uh, this is when most people stuff it up in their calculators, um, which is easy to do. That comes to um, 4 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by uh, 4.225 times 10 to the minus 3, and if you bang that out, it should end up to be 0 0.95, um, and we worked it out moles to minus 1. Decimeters. Uh, what does that value suggest? Uh, just in case you've lost that, we got it to be 0 0.95. Um, it suggests it's to the left-hand side, um, uh, because it's less than 1. Um, so, uh, it does suggest it's on the left-hand side, um, which means I've got more reactants than products. Uh, so, what is the effect of energy on Kc if the chemists increase both the temperature and the pressure? Remember, pressure does not affect Kc at all. Um, if we go back, you will note it's actually an exothermic reaction up there. So, um, if it's exothermic, that means that the equilibrium will shift to the left hand side. So, what will be the value? So, an increase in temperature, the equilibrium will shift in endothermic direction, which is to the left hand side and therefore Kc will decrease. Why is it difficult to predict what will happen to the position of equilibrium after we do both increase the temperature and the pressure? Well, as I've just said here, and let's repeat it, increase in temperature, equilibrium shifts in endo direction, which is to left-hand side. But let's just go back to the old uh, equation. You'll remember back from uh, Le Chatelier's principle, I have got four moles of gas here and only three moles of gas there. So if I increase the pressure, it will shift to the side with fewer numbers of um, fewer moles of gas. So 
uh, increase stability of the ring, increase pressure, the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side because there are fewer moles of gas on the right hand side. Um, therefore it's tough because temperature saying it will go to the left, pressure saying it will go to the right, and therefore it's difficult to establish where the balance will be.